Hello buddies, we are here to give you an explanation and recap of Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. We will carefully break down the entire movie's plot for you in this video. Additionally, the movie's ending is causing some controversy among fans, so you're watching the right video. To clear up any uncertainty in your mind, we will describe what the movie's ending explains. The revolutionary sequel demonstrates how progressing to the next chapter may be a chapter unto itself. This feels like the tale filmmaker Ryan Coogler was always going to tell a story that has only grown more emotional in light of the passing of Chadwick Boseman, the star of the original Black Panther movie taking the beautiful story from that movie and expanding on it in surprising way. Wakanda forever starts with a broken down country. King T'Challa, the Black Panther, their adored leader who propelled Wakanda into the international spotlight, has passed away. He and Wakanda made enormous sacrifices in Avengers, Infinity War to fight Thanos, and he also gave the world a gift of vibranium, but it wasn't enough. Several Western forces, including those of the US government, commanded by the Contessa Valentina Allegra de Fontaine, wished to use the nation's grief to persuade Namor to bring Wakanda and the underwater nation of Tlaken to blows. Other nations are frantically trying to take Wakanda's vibranium supplies while Namor, a new menace, appears suddenly. Namor unexpectedly appears in Wakanda with Talakanil warriors who are armed with seductive singing abilities similar to Sirens. Namor needs assistance from Shuri and the Queen to defend his world of Talakane. To preserve both of their worlds, Namor needs Wakanda's assistance to assassinate the inventor of the vibranium detecting device. But that scientist is Riri Williams, also known as Ironheart. The Wakandans seek refuge in the land owned by the Mountain Tribe following Namor's assault on Wakanda. In a traditional scientific montage, Shuri and Riri Williams work to develop devices that will protect her people from the adversary and his base of operations, Talakan. This creates a new, glittering set of red armor for Williams, as well as a synthetic version of the heart-shaped plant that was created using the same blue herb that was used to alter the future Talakanil. While expecting to see her mother or brother after taking some of her synthetic herbs, Shuri is greeted by her cousin N. Jadaka, also known as Eric Killmonger Stevens. Angered by the altercation between the two of them, in which Killmonger urges Shuri to exact revenge, she complains that the herb didn't work when she awakened. However, when she strikes a mannequin sport in one of her suits and sends it flying across the lab, she proves that the herb did indeed work. She is still troubled by Killmonger's statements, which contribute to the movie's resolution. Shuri visits the Tribal Council after realizing she now possesses the Black Panther's abilities to demonstrate them and recommends retaliating against Namor. Except for M'Baku, who has matured since the original Black Panther, Everyone agrees. This isn't the first time he shows how the battle with Thanos altered him. During the movie, he also offers additional guidance and advice to Shuri. They proceed with Shuri's plan, which involves courting Namor and removing him from the water because that is where she feels his strength lies, despite his advice to refrain from attacking Talakan because it may start an endless battle. The battle that ensues is fought by warriors including Dora Milage and Riri in an exosuit akin to Iron Man's Nakia, Okoye, and Anika's wearing Shuri's Midnight Angel armor. The battle takes place on the Royal Sea Leopard, a Wakandan seagoing warship, a Wakandan seagoing warship. Namor manages to move the conflict to a nearby island, where it is just Shuri and Namor, despite the collected warrior's best efforts to confine him there. Even though Shuri briefly clipped Namor's ankle wings during the fight, they trade off taking the initiative. Her strategy depends on using an airplane to eventually catch Namor. She intended to keep him away from water to lessen his abilities. It also works. Ramonda finally connects with Shuri after she gains the upper hand. Her recollections of her counsel and love successfully counteracting Killmongers in Shuri's head, telling her to reveal her true self to him. Even though Shuri's new attire is eerily similar to Killmonger's Black Panther outfit, she leans more toward her brother's view of the hero. We can see that Shuri's anger and fury won't define her by her choice not to kill Namor, as she goes on to become the hero and protector that will 
Wakanda may not have requested but still sorely needs. Shuri assures Namor that Wakanda will defend Talakan from invasion as their battle comes to an end. However, it appears that the two will still occasionally cross paths or bang heads. To put an end to the war and deliver their people back to their homes, they head back to the Sea Leopard. And not just a Jabari mountain hideout. Namor bemoans to his cousin afterward that Wakanda will now turn to them in the future because they have the country's support. After all, Wakanda forever highlights the fact that numerous nations either attack Wakanda's infrastructure or falsely accuse it of committing crime. The only thing left to do is wait for his war. Marvel should be commended for postponing the villain's fate. But when Namor asks them to join forces, what will happen on a global scale? Will this damage Wakanda's already shaky relations with the rest of the uranium? Hungry World After the film's action climax, it ties up several unfinished strands before returning to T'Challa's memory for an emotional conclusion. Okoye frees CA agent Everett Ross from armed captivity following his capture for aiding the Wakandans. Shuri entirely rebuilds her father's car and sends it back for Riri as she makes her way back to the United States. As she heads back to Mitt, Riri leaves her iron heart suit behind. Given the technology she's seen in Wakanda, it appears like Williams won't have any trouble making an even better version of the suite when she gets her program, Ironheart, which is planned to premiere in late 2023. The return of any of Riri's new Wakandan acquaintances in the upcoming season will be an interesting development. To ensure that the Protector will continue after her reign as the Black Panther, Shuri also plants some artificial heart-shaped herbs in the forest at the film's conclusion, while also foreshadowing the mid credit scene. Finally, Wakanda's new monarch is crowned in a formal ceremony. Shuri opts not to go, and Baku issues a challenge to anyone who wants the crown. The ceremony's end isn't shown, but it's safe to infer that Mbaku triumphed and assumed the throne displacing the Black Panther from the King or Queen of Wakanda, if someone accepted his challenge, that is. However, it appears that M'Baku and Shuri may have discussed this strategy, so it is not as though M'Baku is acting without care for the throne. As was already established, this film's M'Baku differs drastically from other iterations in that he appears to care about all of the residents of Wakanda, rather than just his tribe. In the movie's epilogue, Shuri's journey to Haiti to visit Nakia is depicted. In a nod to a previous scene, Shuri visits the beach to burn the ceremonial clothes she wore to Chao's funeral at the opening of the movie. Ramonda had earlier counseled Shuri to move on by doing this, but it wasn't until the confrontation with Namor that Shuri was able to look deep enough to achieve this. While Wakanda forever talks about pretty universal themes and experiences, it's tough to ignore how intensely personal it still is. This scene underlines the intense emotionality of the film as well as the importance of its relationships, and it is continued as the mid credit scene. We can witness Shuri's independence throughout Wakanda forever from her new Black Panther, which she may have influenced more than her brother Killmonger, to her potential abdication of the throne to allow Makyu to ascend to power. This isn't the last we'll see of Shuri's interpretation of Black Panther since it is stated in the end credits that the character will, obviously, return. No matter when we see Shuri next, it appears that her portrayal of the Black Panther will be unlike any other version of this character that Wakanda or the world has ever seen before. It makes sense that we could see her in Iron Heart since Riri Williams will be getting her series or one of the forthcoming Avengers movies. So here's the entire plot of the movie Black Panther. Wakanda forever. We hope that you liked the video. Kindly like this video and subscribe to our channel to watch more fun content like this.